Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Lord, we just lift you up. I just ask that everybody stand. Lord, you see us all standing, Lord, and we just, we just thank you. I just can't stop thanking you this morning. Lord, we just pray for your presence in this room like never before, that it rained down.
healing over the body. <laughs> and they gave the opportunity for those that wanted to get prayed for, prayed for for healing to come forward. Now, most of you know of the back issues my wife has. And she has been prayed over by the best of them, let me tell you. But something in her said, go forward. Like, you can probably explain this better than me. And I argued a bit, because I'm like, well, I'm not going to go forward, because I know what's going to happen. They're going to pray, and nothing's going to happen, and then they're going to say, how do you feel? Well, we'll pray again, and how do you feel? And we'll pray again, and I'm like, I've done this a thousand times, God. Like, you know my heart, like this, I'm, I'm like done, you know? Uh, you know, because if it's not my back, it's my hip, it's my pelvis, it's my other hip, it's in back to my back, it's whatever. So he said, get up, <laughs> get up and go down there. I'm like, eh, blah, blah, blah. you know, the whole back and forth you do. Not me, God told you to get yeah, up. Yeah, God told me, yeah, he wasn't even paying attention to me. No, 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 he knows not to have that conversation with me. So, <laughs> so I get up and, uh, so I get up and I go down, and uh, at the beginning of service, a woman got up and she gave a word, a good word over the house, and uh, it actually fit us to a T as well, and, and so she ended up praying for me, and um, so again, she prays for me, and she's like, how do you feel? And I'm like, I don't feel anything. <laughs> I feel the same. She's like, oh, we'll pray again, and I'm thinking, see, I told you what was going to happen. <laughs> But when he told me to get up and go, he says, this is your faith in action. I'm like, 
This is how I talk, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, you've seen my faith in action a million times, like, you know? And something just told me I need to get up in this crowd of people that I do not know, a soul in this room, and I need to get up and I need to go down there. So she prayed again, and then she said, how do you feel? And I said, no, and I'm like, it's okay. I'm telling her, it's okay. And I walked away. And so a couple of days later, I go to physical therapy, and well, we had a ride home in the car, so I'm sleeping in a hotel bed, which isn't good. I'm, I'm in a car for hours at end, that's not good. Um, I go to PT on Wednesday, and he's like, wow, you're like still really in alignment. Like you're not off like you usually are. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's great. You know, whatever, not even thinking. And so then the other day, he's like, hello, hello, is anybody home? He's like, how's your hip? How's your back? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's been fine. It's been fine. Now I'll just tell you now, this isn't just a, a week of pain. This isn't a year of pain. This isn't five years of pain. I started physical therapy for my back after my son was born. He just turned 18. That's how long I've been praying for my miracle. But something that was spoken that day too in that message, it was all about confidence. It was what, what are we, yeah, we're praying and yeah, our hearts are good, but is our confidence really in our prayer? And I can't talk too much about that because that's my Thursday night message, but you'll have to come Thursday night. But it's about the, what's our confidence in? Is it really no matter what we see, no matter that I didn't see a change for years and years and years, doesn't mean that God's still not good, doesn't mean that God's still not gonna heal, doesn't mean that God's still not gonna fix your life, doesn't mean any of that. I don't know, I don't have the answers. I just have a better feeling body and that's all that, care, that I care about. And I know that, I know who did it. And so I think, again, it, it's about in the waiting period. There's a waiting period sometimes. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. You can't make it about you. I've done it way too many times. What am I not doing right? Is my heart not in the right place? Do I have sin somewhere that's not? What's holding me back, God? I don't know the answers. I just know that you keep looking forward and you keep moving in Him, and that's the answer. That's the only answer. That's the only answer. I, I think one of the most, the most biggest things that stuck out to me was that God told her in your act of obedience of stepping down there, stepping in faith, there's going to be a shift. And how many of you know he's not a respecter of persons? That is transferable. So if you have been prayed for and prayed for and prayed for and nothing has happened and you're still contending for your healing, come on down. In your step of faith saying, okay, God, here it is. Uh, come on. I know there's more of you. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Understand it is not the prayer of the person in front of you. It is God above you. Huh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So we're just going to go back into worship. And, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time praying over you guys. I'm going to hit you and let God do the rest of it. You know? And I guarantee you he is going to release something in this room right now. I guarantee you he is going to release something in this room right now. Huh. So, Father, we thank you, God, for these that have said, God, I'm being obedient to what you're saying. I'm stepping forward even though I've been prayed for over and over and over and over. But, God, there is something that you're releasing this morning that each and every one wants to receive, God. So just put your hands out in front of you. That's all. Just in a posture to receive from him.
side but you're just a little too short you're a tall guy but you're a little too short you just can't get there and what he showed me was a weight that's wrapped on your ankles that's holding you back see you've learned religion in a certain way and a certain way of I've got to I've got to do this in order to get here I've got to do that in order to get there I see Jesus walking behind you and laying in the gap and saying walk on my back I've already made the path for you. And as you step, that, that chain breaks off of your ankle. See, God's going to open up a whole new level of understanding of who He is for you. The best part that I saw is I saw you all dressed up and fancy. I mean, just, just look into the nines, man. And as you stepped forward, that whole thing shed it off. And you were just who you are. Comfortable perfectly and wonderfully made the way that you are see God's not looking for you to be a certain way to get a certain place he's looking for you to be you because he created you the way that you are and as you just say Jesus you've already accomplished this all I need to do is just walk across what you've already done everything changes and I see you going up that mountain man. and Moses came back down changed forever that's awesome. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's, that's where I'm at. I know you got something here too, so. <clears throat> I knew Pastor Tom had something for you, young man. He was, you were talking to this young man, right? Hi. You were dedicated to the Lord when you were very young. Yes? Right? Jeremiah 1.5, you know this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you. Before you even took your first breath, God ordained you. And he sent you to the nations. God's calling you to the nations, young man. You know that, don't you? Yeah, well, he has. He, God's calling you to impact the nations because there's a tremendous call of God on your life. But as Pastor Tom was, was sharing, it's going to be birthed out of not religion, but just kind of hanging out with Jesus. So that's something you're going to have to learn how to do. Just We're just hanging out today. And you're going to have to learn how to hang out. It's in you. You have the goods, my friend. Ralph and Susan, hey, good morning. Doors closed, doors open. Doors closed, doors open. Doors are closing, doors are opening. And 
I don't know where you are as far as retirement. There isn't retirement for either one of you. You know, but I, I, see the, I just see doors closing for you. And I see new doors opening. And I hear, I just see the Lord with a big smile on his face. And he's saying, get ready for a surprise. I, I actually saw over the two of you a celebration anointing that's being poured out. I don't know, I just saw the two of you partying. I, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what that stood for, but I really did. I saw that during worship. So this is going to be awesome. Where's Artie? Is Artie He's right in front of me? So Artie, this morning I'm sitting here in worship time and I see a picture of you. And I see a picture of you on this boat. And I see that there's another boat that's next to you and this boat is sinking. And I see people in the water. And all of a sudden I hear the words, rescue mission. And I see you already pulling people out of the water into the boat. You're rescuing them. You're saving them from being killed, from being gone. And I want to say this morning, Artie, God wants to make you a rescuer of people. He wants you to pull people in the boat. God's giving you, you're a great person. You're like someone that can, anyone can talk to. In fact, people come and talk to you and you don't even want to talk to them sometimes. Because that's just how you are. The, the anointing on your life that God's given you is the ability to reach people. And I want to tell you, this morning, I just see that, you know, I know you've had a tough time figuring out, God, what is going on in my life? What, you know, we're on this like hamster wheel that like the devil keeps trying to keep us on. But this morning, I just saw more than ever that your life is going to be about rescuing people. That in the days to come, God's going to increase the anointing on your life more than you ever thought it could be. And all of the sadness, all the disappointment, all the failures, they're all going to be worth it. Because all the things you've been through, all the tunnels and the dark tunnels and alleyways you've been through are going to give you the ability and the anointing to reach people more than ever before. And I want to say this morning that I saw this gavel come down and saying, not guilty. And you need to hear that, son. God loves you. He cares about you. And you are not guilty. And I want to say this morning, sometimes we can go to good places and good places can keep telling us we're guilty. That's not God. It's not God's motivation. His motivation is love for you. So I want to encourage this morning. I'll tell you, I saw that clear as a bell. I, I mean, literally, I'm seeing you in this boat and I've seen the waves rolling. I want to describe the whole picture. And I'm seeing your know, waves coming over the bow and I'm seeing you pulling people in and in and in and there's no end to it. I don't see an end to the people. So I want to encourage my Artie that God is going to give you a new and fresh anointing. He's going to give you, an, he's giving you a new perspective as we speak right now in life. And he's going to heal you of all the past. He's healing you as we speak of all the old stuff and all the failures and all the things you, you thought you couldn't do. God's going to take all that away. It's going to give you a new perspective on life. And see, you're doing it now. Whether you realize or not, you're affecting people's lives. But I see that God's going to give you a pinpoint greater accuracy to be able to touch people in a powerful way. So hopefully it makes some sense this morning. Amen. Francis, where's Francis? Francis, there 